In your Bible or in your Bible app, there are three passages of Scripture that you can open to. You can just take your pick because we're going to be in each of them. Deuteronomy chapter 7, that's toward the early part of the Bible. Romans chapter 4, and then Lamentations chapter 3. You may not be as familiar with Lamentations. Uh, that's over by Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, in that part of your Bible. But uh, we'll be going through those scriptures, so you've got time to find them. But we're going to talk today about the fact that God is a faithful God. Now, we live in a world of constant change. In Hebrews chapter 12, it talks about earth and heaven being shaken. And it talks about a time when everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And, and it kind of seems like, you know, we're living in one of those times when, when uh, what was it, Elvis, a whole lot of shaking going on? Whoever said a whole lot of shaking was going on? Uh, there's a whole lot of shaking going on. And things that we thought we could depend on, people maybe you thought you could depend on, things are being shaken. Certainly true internationally, certainly true nationally, and for many of us, I'm sure it's true personally. And sometimes, in the quiet of our own hearts, we find ourselves asking the question, is there really anything or anyone I can really depend on? And the answer is yes. And I came by today to remind you of Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. God is God. He is the faithful God. And in a world where there's all this shaking going on, He is an unshakable, unshaking God. As the songwriter said, When all around my soul gives way, he, then, is all my hope and stay. When we think of the word faithful, if you, if you look at it through the scriptures as it relates to God, it means he is permanent. You know, he's not temporary. He is unchanging. He is dependable. He is a strong tower of strength and support. I don't know about you. I need that in my life. <laughs> a strong tower of strength and support. And when you look at that word faithful, uh, especially in the Hebrew language, and you look at many of the other ways it was used, it was also used to mean to care for as a parent cares for his child, or as a nurse cares for a patient. So it's not only he's dependable, but he is loving and compassionate in his care for us. It has with it the idea of support and building up. And it's very similar to the Hebrew word for truth, which means trustworthy and dependable. This is who God is. He is the faithful God. And as I was reflecting on this yesterday, it, it hit me that as we're studying these words about God, these attributes of God, faithfulness is one of the foundational ones. You know, in recent weeks, we've been talking about the fact that God is always with us. Well, we believe that because he's faithful and he's dependable. So we know he's always with us. We've talked about the fact that he has all power and his power is available to us because he's dependable. He's faithful. We talked about the fact that he knows everything. He knows his plan for our lives and he is faithful to bring that about. We talked about his wisdom that he knows how to handle everything that comes into our lives and work it together to accomplish his plan for us. He is dependable. He is faithful. You're never going to have a day when you hear God say, oops, I wasn't expecting that. I don't know what to do now. You know, He is faithful and dependable. He is all wise. He is a good God. And last week we said our response to these characteristics of God is, trust him and obey him. And we can do that because he is faithful. You never have to wake up in the morning and wonder, is God going to hear my prayers today? Is God going to watch over me today? He is the faithful, dependable God.
Psalm 36, verse 5, Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Psalm 119, verses 89 and 90, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Thy faithfulness continues throughout all generations. I ran across something, uh, a social media post a few weeks ago. If I'd have known it was going to come to my mind this morning, I would have paid more attention to it. But it, it was basically, and I've had this discussion with people, I'm sure you've had this discussion with people, how challenging it is in our day and age to raise children. And sometimes kind of how frightening it is. You know, I mean, for decades, people said, I don't want to bring children into this world. And, and the response of this person on social media was, that's the wrong answer. Because God knew what our world was going to be like. And if he allowed those children to come into this world, he has a plan for those children to impact the world to come. And I thought, I like that perspective. That God is bringing children into the world of his, of his people so that we can train them to make a difference in whatever comes uh, in our society and in the days to come. God is a faithful God, and his faithfulness continues throughout all generations. After we're dead and gone and are a faint memory, God's faithfulness is still going to be there to those who survive us. And I love Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. He who promised is faithful. So we could close the time right now. Just say, go home and depend on God. <laughs> he is the faithful God. But y'all know me well enough to know I can't let that be. What is interesting about God's faithfulness is that almost every time in the scripture, when God's faithfulness is mentioned, it is tied to a human need or predicament. In other words, God's faithfulness is not some isolated characteristic of God. His faithfulness is tied to our need, the challenges of our life. That's one of the reasons why I find myself preaching this sermon usually at least once a year, <laughs> because when we go through transition times, when our nation goes through transition times, when our church goes through transition times, we need to be reminded that God is a faithful God. So if you feel like you've heard this sermon before, you probably have, because I've preached it before, because we need, or at least I do, need to be continually reminded that we serve a faithful God. He is faithful when we are surrounded by enemies and are facing an uncertain future. <laughs> Back in the days, and maybe they still do, I don't know, in newspapers, they would put the weather report, and the weather report was supposed to say there's less than a 50% chance of rain tomorrow, but they left out a couple of words, and the report actually said there's less than a 50% chance of tomorrow. <laughs> so you know, sometimes you wonder about that. But when you face an uncertain future, God is the faithful God. This is the Deuteronomy chapter 7 passage. The children of Israel have spent the last 40 years in the wilderness. They've been wandering in the wilderness. They're getting ready to enter into the promised land. If you remember, like the book of Joshua and Judges, the, the promised land was not a land that God had wiped out all of their enemies and planted all kinds of gardens and just said, come on in, I've got everything ready for you. No, it was a land that was inhabited by at least seven other nations that were larger and more powerful than Israel was. And on top of that, Moses, who's the only leader they've known, is getting ready to die. And the book of Deuteronomy is made up of three addresses that Moses gave the children of Israel, just as they're getting ready to enter into this unknown territory, and they're facing an uncertain future. They're facing a new geographical location, they're going to have to adjust to Joshua, a new leader. There are new challenges there. They're, they are surrounded by people that don't want them there. Uh, I don't know if you can relate to any of that or not. But when you're facing an uncertain future, God is the faithful God. 
And Moses in Deuteronomy 7 reminds them that God brought them out of Egypt, and he basically says, you're about to be surrounded by people that are more numerous than you are. They're going to destroy, try to destroy your faith, but know, and this is the verse I read to you earlier, chapter 7, verse 9, know therefore that the Lord your God, he is God, he is the faithful God. We need to hold on to that. There's an old song that says, I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds my hand. And, and we don't have to know everything about the future. What we have to know is that God is with us. And as I was putting this together, now somehow I found Psalm 36. This is a fascinating passage of Scripture. It reads like the news. Psalm 36, the first five verses. I have a message from God in my heart concerning the sinfulness of the wicked. There is no fear of God before their eyes. In their own eyes, they flatter themselves too much to detect or hate their own sin. The words of their mouths are wicked and deceitful. They fail to act wisely or do good. And we think we're the first society that ever faced that issue. David faced it a long time ago. Even on their beds, they plot evil. They commit themselves to a sinful course, and they don't reject what's wrong. And this next verse is, so I'm going to throw up my hands and quit. No, nope. the next verse, Psalm 36, verse 5. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. That's kind of a jarring verse in that context. He's saying, yeah, people are really evil, and they lay up awake at night plotting evil, and they're too proud of themselves to even realize how sinful they are. And, and yet, God, you are still the faithful God. <laughs> For years, preachers have stood or sat in their pulpits and said, things are bad, they are worse than they've ever been. And they were probably true at the time. But here's the good news. God is still the faithful God. So go home and, and live in Psalm 36 for a while. When, when, it, you, when you wonder, what in the world is our world coming to? Realize that no matter what it's coming to, what's important is someone is coming back to the world one of these days. And in the meantime, he is the loving, faithful God. You don't have to be afraid of the future. God is already there. He is faithful when we're facing an uncertain future. He is faithful when we have to wait. In my work as a healthcare chaplain, I have come to have a profound respect for the waiting room. There, there is not a more, at times, sacred place than a waiting room outside of an ICU. You know, back, you know, two years ago when people could go to the hospital and sit and wait, those waiting rooms became almost churches. They became a, a social network because, you know, especially in some of the ICUs that I dealt with, people were in ICU a long time. And so the families were there and they got to know each other. And they got to know who each other's loved one was. And they would come back from that, you know, five-hour visits every three hours and say, did they know you? Did they open their eyes? You know, and, and it was just this, this thing of, of just profound, almost sanctity of, of what happened in the waiting room. But the waiting room is hard because nobody can tell you how long you're going to have to be there. Because you, know, you just have to wait. And I don't, I don't like to wait. Ask Donna. She will tell you, does it really matter that you have to get around that car so that you can get where you need to be? She obviously doesn't understand how important it is that I get to where I want to go. <laughs> but, you know, I, I don't like to wait. I don't like to wait at red lights. I don't like to wait for trains. I, you know, I don't like to wait. One of the hardest things that each of us has to learn in our spiritual life is waiting 
on God. God never, well, rarely, moves in a hurry. You know, somebody said, you got to remember when you read through the scriptures, God basically refers to himself as a farmer. You know, there are seasons. It takes a while. And we have to wait. And of course, the, the illustration of that is Romans chapter 4. And that's when God says to Abraham and Sarah, you're going to have a child. And you may remember that he was 75, Abraham was, when he received that promise. And he was 100 when the promise was fulfilled. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 4, without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. But he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised, that God was the faithful God. In Hebrews chapter 11, it gives us Sarah's perspective. By faith, even Sarah herself received ability to conceive even beyond the proper time of life since she considered him faithful who had promised. They had to wait 25 years. But what kept them steady through those 25 years was they depended on the faithfulness of God to keep his promise. And in Genesis 21, it says it happened at the exact time that God said it would. God is faithful even while we're waiting. So what I want to say to you is keep on praying, keep on believing, keep on trusting, keep on holding on. You've been waiting for so long. Don't stop now. The old timers used to say, keep on keeping on. God is is faithful. In Psalm 143, the psalmist cries out, Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness, come to my relief. So if you're waiting for an answer, I just want to remind you God is faithful and the answer's on its way. Third, God is faithful when I'm discouraged. <clears throat> I know nobody here ever gets discouraged, but in case someday you do, uh, Lamentations chapter 3, God is faithful and I'm discouraged. The prophet Jeremiah had preached for 40 years with no positive results. He was imprisoned. He was laughed at. The other people who called themselves prophets said, he's lying to you. Don't listen to what he said. And while he's in prison, he writes the book of Lamentations. You don't have to wonder what that book's about. <laughs> the title tells you. It is the book of his lamenting. And by the way, if the prophet Jeremiah, who is being fully obedient to God, ends up discouraged and depressed, don't beat yourself up when you get under a cloud. It's no sin to be under a cloud. Now, what you do there is very important for your future. And it may mean that you need to get help outside of yourself to help you get through it. But it's no sin to be discouraged or depressed. He was, but here's what kept him going. Lamentations chapter 3. I call this to mind, and therefore I have hope. Okay, Jeremiah, you've just been whining and complaining and fussing about how bad everything is. What was it that you called to your remembrance and gave you hope? He tells us, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And so he says, so I will say to myself, the Lord is my portion. I will wait for him. I'm glad that God doesn't discard us when we get discouraged. But he reminds us, I am the faithful God, 
and I will be with you. My mercies are new every morning. I've got a fresh supply every day. Great is my faithfulness. Or as the psalmist said in Psalm chapter 30, verse 5, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. God is faithful. Even when we were discouraged, even when we're in the dark times, God is still the faithful God. There's a verse in Exodus that always comes to my mind when I talk about people being in darkness. The old timers, the old mystics of the Christian faith, talked about the dark night of the soul. And what they meant was that period of time where you can't seem to find God anywhere, and, and, and it's just like it's dark. We've all been there probably. If you haven't been, there will come a day probably when you will be, when, when everything is dark around you. Exodus chapter 20, verse 21 has a fascinating phrase. It says, the thick darkness where God was. You know, we can't see him in the darkness. You ever been in a place that was so dark you literally couldn't see your hand in front of your face? God is still there, whether you can see him or not. And Isaiah chapter 50, verse 10, who is it among you that fears the Lord, that obeys his voice, but walks in the darkness and has no light? It's possible to be obedient to God and still be in darkness. What do you do? Let him trust in the name of the Lord. God is faithful. Told you a couple of weeks ago. My bottom line is God is great, period. God is good, period. I don't have to understand why. I don't have to try to figure out how. I just know that I trust him. And he knows how and he knows why my job is is to trust and obey. He is the faithful God. I can depend on him. Therefore, I can trust and obey. God is faithful when I'm suffering. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 19. Those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. Huh. It's interesting that faithful is in that verse. When you're going through hard times, we talked about that last week with Job and with Joseph and the three Hebrew young men. When you're going through difficult times, stay true to God. S commit yourself to your faithful creator and continue to do good. Trust and obey. God is faithful when we're tempted. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you're tempted, he'll provide a way out so that you can endure it. King James says a way of escape. Now, I realize that sometimes it seems that we're being tempted beyond what we can bear. But God always provides a way of escape. And in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, Paul says, The Lord is faithful, he will strengthen you, and he will protect you from the evil one. So whatever we're going through and whatever the devil sends our way, God is the faithful God who will continue to strengthen us, who will continue to protect us. My son coached high school sports for a while. And if you coach sports, eventually you learn who you can depend on and who you can't depend on. You know? Well, we can't run that play because we have no idea if the guy that's the key to making that play work is going to even remember what the play is or if he's going to do what he's supposed to do. So we can't run that. You know? But if you get in trouble, you can always hand the ball to so-and-so because they know what to do. And, and in life, right, you learn. In your job, you learn. Don't even bother to ask them because they will promise you they'll get it done and you're still going to have to do it because they aren't going to do it. You know, you learn who you can depend on. God is a God we can depend on. We never have to think or be concerned that he's going to let us down. He is the faithful God. And my favorite of all his faithfulness, 1 John 1, 9. When I sin, if we confess our sins... He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
What a tremendous promise. Maybe you've never accepted Christ as your Savior. Or maybe you've known a time of closer fellowship with Him and you've drifted away. The good news is, if we confess our sins, Lord, I messed up. You know I did. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. I heard somebody pray one time, Lord, if it's your will, let this person come to know you as their Savior. And I thought, no, that's not the prayer. Because God is not willing that any should perish. He wants everyone to come to repentance. The good news is, it doesn't matter how far you've gone away from God, He loves you, and if you'll confess those sins and acknowledge your sinfulness, He will forgive you. And you don't have to go through the list Lord, I remember last Tuesday, and Lord, don't know. Just, Lord, I know that I've done wrong. I know that I've done things that are against your will. Please forgive me and come into my life. And he will do that. And that's good news. He is the faithful, dependable God. And you can count on him. Now, you're not supposed to introduce a new thought at the end of the sermon, but I'm going to introduce a new thought at the end of the sermon, and here's the thought. God is faithful to us. Can he depend on us to be faithful to him? Let's live our lives trusting the trustworthy God, being faithful to the faithful God. Thank you, Lord, that we can count on you. We don't have to know why things are happening or how they're going to turn out as long as we know you because you are the faithful God. And Lord, I have no idea what those of us in this room are going through, those who are watching whenever they may be watching what they're going through. But I do know this, you are God. You are the faithful, dependable, trustworthy God. You will be our tower of strength. You will be our firm refuge. And I pray, Lord, that as as we face uncertainty, there's so much uncertainty in people's businesses and people's jobs and people's health and all kinds of uncertainty in our lives. But Lord, may our foundation be, I know God and I trust God. He is faithful and dependable. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I put my trust in in the faithful God. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine on you and give you his peace now and evermore. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being with us this morning. You're dismissed.